Hello, how are you doing today? Could you use some wise words? <laughs> could you use some wisdom in your life for today? I could use some wisdom. I'm hoping you do too because the Apostle Paul has some really good wise words for us today. So if you know someone who needs some wise words, hit like, hit love, hit share because we're gonna get a few. He's, he's got like a greatest hits going on that we're gonna hit it. So let me start out by saying hello, ndewa, baoni, hola, privi, ni hao, como esta? Anya haseo. Welcome to Dr. Barry Daily. Blessings and peace to you around the globe today. Do you need some wisdom? I could use some wisdom. Let's see what the Apostle Paul's got for us. Let's open in prayer because that's always the best place to start. And let's ask for God's peace, amen, and his presence. Let's get started. Lord God, I come before you this day and I just pray for this one listening right now. I pray for your peace. I pray for your presence. Lord God, whatever is happening around us this day, I just ask that you would create a moment, a sacred moment with you right now. Put calm in our minds. Be with us. Lord God, as we hear your words, open our eyes, open our ears, open our minds, open our bodies, open our souls, open us completely to your word. Lord Jesus, Give this one listening today a special message from your word. In Jesus' name, amen. And all God's people said amen. Hello to you wherever you're at. Say hi. Uh, tell me what you're doing today. It is a cloudy kind of misty day in Oregon, which we are super happy for because it's got to put out all those wildfires. They're still raging. But in the meantime, let's look for some wisdom from the Apostle Paul. Amen. And then in the comments, just tell me. What pops out to you today as you hear this? You ready? Here we go. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves or you also may be tempted. Now look, carry each other's burdens and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ which he just said was loving your neighbor as yourself. So if anyone thinks that they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. And each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. For each one should carry their own load. Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things with their instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially, especially to those who belong to to the family of believers. Now, see what large letters I use as I write to you with my own hands, says the Apostle Paul. Those who want to impress people by means of the flesh are trying to compel you to be circumcised. And the only reason that they do this is to avoid being persecuted for the cross of Christ. Not even those who are circumcised keep the law, yet they want you to be circumcised that they can just boast about your circumcision in the flesh. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Neither circumcision or uncircumcision, it doesn't mean anything. What counts is the new creation, peace and mercy to all who follow this rule to the Israel of God. So look, from now on, don't let anyone cause me any trouble because I bear on my body the marks of Jesus and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit brothers and sisters amen the word of the Lord how are you today it's good to see you what popped out hey Jacqueline hey Alicia hey Terry hey Grace hey Elise what popped out to you today what stood out go ahead and put it in the comments a lot stood out to me today so I I mean it's just like you know it's like the Proverbs or something. He's just laying out his final thoughts like a bullet point list of wisdom for us today. So he starts out and he says, brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person 
gently. And then he says, watch yourselves so you don't get tempted to it. I think that is so important, isn't it? Because sometimes you can actually look into something and then get all caught up in it. So this is a great word of wisdom. But I also love, because doesn't Jesus tell us to speak the truth, how? With love. Restore that person gently. I just think that's important. I think that's something to sit on. And I think it's also important to know that you're not to give up on somebody, right? You're to keep on with that person and restoring them, helping to restore them gently. But don't get caught up in their yuck. Now look, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Now I said it in the middle, but do you remember, can you put over here, in the last chapter, Paul just told us, what is the greatest law? What did he say was the greatest commandment? And that all the others are wrapped up in this one. Do you remember? Can you put it in the comments? Love your neighbor as yourself. I'm glad you put it in the comments, though, because people will come back and look and see it, so... Good. I mean, like, they're reading and then they can see an answer. Love your neighbor as yourself. How can we carry each other's burdens and love our neighbor as ourselves? What are some examples of carrying each other's burdens? Isn't that an interesting thing? Love your neighbor as yourself wasn't just to be kind to somebody, wasn't just to have a nice word, wasn't to not persecute somebody. It was actually to carry one another's burdens. That's the specific example that he gives. How can we carry each other's burdens here, together, on this Facebook Live, in this space? How can we do that? Do you guys have some examples? How do we carry each other's burdens? He says, if anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. Each one should carry their own load. So on the one hand, he says, carry each other's burdens. And on the other, he says, um, you just carry your own load. But he's talking about comparing yourself to others. Oh, it's so easy to compare yourself to others, right? Especially on Facebook. They show all their best pictures. They show all their greatest achievements, right? It's like your friend's greatest hits list. And you look at that and think, wow, I don't look that great today. Wow, I don't have that nice a house. I wasn't on a boat. I didn't get to go to Disneyland, right? I don't have all those children. I don't have those grandchildren. My children or grandchildren aren't doing those great things. Let's listen to Apostle Paul again. If anyone thinks they are something when they are not, they deceive themselves. So if you're propping up pictures to make yourself look like something that you're not, you know what I mean? Like you make your whole, like five feet of your house clean and then take the perfect picture. Each one should test their own action. I say that and I want you to know I'm sitting in a room that's a mess. So. <laughs> that's on me. All right. Each one should test their own actions. They can take pride in themselves without carrying themselves to someone else. Do you know what? God's not talking about pride in the sense of pride cometh before the fall here, like puffing yourself up. But when you have the fruit of the Spirit, I think you can feel good. God wants you to feel positive. Wow. You know what, Lord? I followed you today, and I carried my brother's burden. I carried my sister's burden by thinking of them today, by praying for them today, by texting them an encouraging word, by messaging them an encouraging word, by on face on my Facebook live chat, I told someone I'm praying for you, I'm thinking of you, I'm glad to see you. Carry each other's burdens, just let someone know they're not alone. Right? Right now in this time of isolation, and I know we're all trying to find ways around it, but let someone know you care. Let them know you're thinking of them. It's just nice to know someone thinking of you. Someone's caring for you. Nevertheless, oh, I want you to know I did not write this. This is in the scripture. <laughs> Nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things with their instructor. I can't, this is, I, well... If you're being blessed, then if you want to give to this ministry, we would be grateful. We have some things we'd like to do, uh, but we need some cash. So that means just expanding onto YouTube and some other places or podcasts. So if you would like to go to Crown of Life, 
uh, discipleship.com, we would be grateful. But that means your pastor, maybe you have several ministries that you're kind of supporting and doing stuff to. I think that's wonderful. And I think it is important, right, to help, if you know that a ministry is good, to help it grow, to help sustain it, right? And that includes through prayer and encouragement. You can bear someone's burden in other ways than just sending money. I mean, money is very practical and helpful, but you can also just I appreciate your encouragement. I'm sure your other pastors or people that you listen to would appreciate encouragement. And you're like, oh, they're so big. You know, they might not care if I said I. Of course they do. They still hear someone came in and said, hey, that blessed me today. Um, your message or, you know, I'm praying for you. It's important. It's really important. So seven, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please the flesh from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit is going to reap eternal life. So here's the deal. Paul gave us a whole bunch of, uh, what we'll call it, his hit list from the flesh. Do you remember yesterday? Let me see if I can. Well, let me, that is the one thing you can't go between things easily when I'm looking online this way and I think I just messed up my whole that's all right there's other ways to get there so this is going to lead to destruction are you ready I just want to remind you sexual immorality impurity um, debauchery idolatry witchcraft hatred discord jealousy fits of rage um, well, NIV says selfish ambition, but it was kind of like house of cards, political intrigue, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, partying, all that's going to lead to destruction. And I think that pretty much if you've ever done any of those things, you would be like, yeah, it doesn't end well for you, right? But what does he say is going to lead to eternal life? Now, these things actually that he gives us aren't things that you can do that lead to eternal life. What is the one thing actually that leads to eternal life. Put that in the comments. And once you have that, done that one thing and received what? This happens. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So when you put aside all those other things and you embrace Jesus Christ and you're filled with his Holy Spirit and you keep seeking him and keep praying and keep reading and keep putting those things away, put away the works of the flesh, put them, the farther they are away from you, the more peace you're going to have. The farther they are away from you, the more joy you're going to have, the more patience you're going to have, right? It will transform you. And then, ooh, I love it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go to the end. Here we are. Verse 15. Oh, well, then verse 13, he says, you know why the circumcised and the uncircumcised? Remember, this is Paul writing a letter to the Philippians. I'm sorry, the Galatians. Why am I saying Philippians? <clears throat> He's writing a letter to the Galatians because he and Barnabas started the church. He, this is around 50 when he's writing. They start the church and they say, hey, I know you're Gentiles. You don't need to eat kosher food. You don't need to be circumcised. You just need to accept the gracious gift of Jesus Christ. Some Christian Jews come and say, well, that was a nice start, but you really should be circumcised. You really should follow kosher laws. And Paul is mad. And he's like, you know, the only reason that they want you to do that is so they can count how many circumcisions there were. Kind of like we count baptisms. Oh, I know. It's true. Um, in denominations, you know, this church had this many baptisms. This church had this many dedications. This church has this many people in their Sunday school class. And, and the pastor gets a little gold star, right? And on the one hand, it's good to measure and look at the data and see, wow, are we growing? Are we doing well? But are you doing it to compare yourself to someone else? Are you doing it just to look good in someone else's eyes? Ah, right? Are you looking at it to say, hey, wow, we grew this year. Hey, wow, we didn't do so well this year. I mean, I think that's all helpful. But what's the motive behind the heart? And here Paul is saying, they they want you to be circumcised because you're a number on their list. Makes them look good. And he says, so they won't be persecuted. No one's going to persecute. The other Jews won't. Because Christianity at this time was still a part of Judaism. And they, other Jews could say, what are you doing? And they could say, hey, no, we're asking these Gentiles to be circumcised. Because if not... Paul was actually stoned, imprisoned. I mean, he was treated terribly because he said to the Gentiles, you don't have to be circumcised, right? And so he's like, they don't want to be persecuted the way I've been persecuted. And I think there comes a point where we have to accept that sometimes Christianity isn't easy. 
but it's good. The whole world is searching for those lists of the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And through Jesus, we actually have access to all of those things. Amen? So what does Paul say? Neither circumcision or uncircumcision means anything. What counts is the new creation. And we've actually had some verses that we've occasionally said together, or I've said to you at the end of our time, and one is 2 Corinthians 5, 16 to 17, so from now on regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we aren't going to do it anymore. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, Paul says, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. You are a remodel project. <laughs> I am a remodel project. We are in process. But sometimes we reach the point where the kitchen's done, the front room's done, and sometimes, you know, you add on to the back. Who knows? Our whole lives, we're going to be being created in the image of God. We're like the ongoing remodel project, right? But there is a point where certain rooms are done. Certain rooms are remodeled. Not that there isn't something a little fidget with over time. God loves you. He's not just going to leave you in the dust. He's not going to leave you in the shame. He's not going to leave you in the guilt. He's not going to leave you in the stress and the anxiety and the fear. He says, come with me, my child. The new has come. The old has passed away. Quit looking at yourself as if you are still that thing that was. You are not. In Christ, you are being remade in the image of God. In Christ, you are a new creature, a new creation. Embrace it. Embrace the joy of it. Verse uh, Ephesians 4, 22 to 24, you were taught with regard to your old former way of life, put that off, put off the old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. Yuck, it stink, it's gross, old garment. Yuck, all the yucky things that could happen to an old garment. Yuck, to be, be made new. In the attitude of your minds, your mind needs a transformation. And to put on, like a beautiful robe, the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. And how does he end this letter? For now, and let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. He had been tortured. He had been stoned. His body had scars. He says, don't even cause me any trouble with your nonsense. And can I encourage you? Don't just let people cause you trouble with their nonsense. 18. He ends with a prayer for them. It's short, it's sweet, but it ends in amen. This is the Apostle Paul's closing words to the Galatians and his closing words to you today, my friends. The grace, meaning it's not about what you do, it's about what he did. Of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. What a good word. And so what did y'all get today? I can't wait to scroll through what you had to carry each other's burdens, loving your neighbor. Terry says, I like that each one should carry his own load. In a sense, I think he was talking about speaking the truth in love and carrying each other's burdens, but not becoming codependent. Jacqueline says, pray for them, listen to them, love on them. Good morning, Pearl. And I'm encouraging others, Grace put down. Pearl, praying for one another. Oh, I mean, Tad, good morning. Michelle, good morning. It's good to see you. All right, friends, I'm going to pray a blessing on you. And I believe that prayer is not well wishing, prayer is actually affecting change in the universe. I don't know the details of how it works, but I know it does happen and it is true. So put your prayer requests in the comments. I'm going to pray a blessing on you. Lord God, I come before you right now for this one listening. And I just pray that you would give them peace of mind and peace of heart. Father, help them to stop caring about what other people think. Help them to just stop being so needy on other people and their opinions. Father, break that. And let them feel your pleasure and your joy and your love so that they feel good about themselves regardless of what their hair looks like today, regardless of how much weight they've gained or lost, regardless of their degrees, regardless of their income, regardless of their abilities. Father, let this one feel your smile. 
Let this one feel your love. I just pray the blessing of your presence and your love on this one today. And it would be enough. And they would experience the joy of no longer worrying about what anybody but you thinks about them. Set them free. Set them free. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord Jesus, you say Deuteronomy 31, 6. Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid or terrified because of anything. For the Lord, your God, goes with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Psalm 39, 7. And now, Lord, for what do I wait? My hope, my confidence is in you. Friend, I pray the strength and courage of Jesus over you this day. I pray the hope and confidence of God in your heart. And I pray all these things that all of us pray together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, friends. What a good time. So glad to be with you today. I hope you are having a wonderful day. And God willing, guess what? Oh, guess what? We start Ephesians tomorrow. It's like one of my favorite books. I'm so excited. <laughs> so, actually, I'm going to be so bummed. I bet they're going through a chapter a day in Ephesians. I could spend like months with you in Ephesians. So, how am I going to keep it short? It'll be a mystery, but I'll see you tomorrow. I'm super excited to start Ephesians. There is good stuff. Bye, friends. God willing, I'll see you tomorrow morning at 9.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Bye-bye.